Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We're going to go through some of the main news stories here in Spain at the moment. On the iPad, we'll have a look at the uh, newspapers El Mundo, El País. We'll also have a look at El Confidencial newspaper as well. And we'll look at the state broadcaster RTVE and see what the focus of their news is today. I'm fairly sure that it's going to be about the snowstorm. There's going to be a little bit of coronavirus news mixed in there as well, because as we know, the situation is getting pretty bad and it's a bit out of control at the moment here in Spain. We'll also have a look at a few comments. I'll go through the comment section and see if I can answer some of the questions there that people have been posing over the last few days. But uh, let's get into the news and we'll start off, as I said, with El Mundo. El Mundo, if you don't know, is, uh, let's say, it's a little bit right of centre newspaper here in Spain, a little bit anti-government at the moment because, of course, we have the left-wing government coalition in power and this newspaper is a little bit anti-government. It's not as bad as some of the more right-wing newspapers in Spain, for example, ABC or La Razón. And there's also a couple of online newspapers now, for example, OK Diario, which is also right of center. So we'll have a look here at El Mundo. We'll have a look what the uh, front page news is. A few political stories here, as we can see. But we'll have a look at this one here, which is an update on the current situation about the snow and ice which is uh, plaguing the center of the country at the moment, reduced mobility. We'll have a look here and see what the article is. And it says, Última hora del temporal. Aguado cree que la normalidad no llegará incluso en semanas. Es una catástrofe. Now, Mr. Aguado, he's the vice president here in the Madrid community. And basically what he's saying here is that he doesn't think that things will get back to normal, at least for another couple of weeks. It's a catastrophe, he says. Of course, there's a bit of a political debate going on at the moment between the central government and the regional government here in Madrid. Uh, the regional government, or at least the mayor of Madrid, I should say, wants to declare this part of Spain a disaster area. The central government doesn't want to do that for some reason, probably because of economic reasons. But the central government here and the Madrid government at the moment at loggerheads over this disaster plan. And another area in Spain as well, I think Castilla-La Mancha, is also weighing up whether they should ask the central government to declare that area or that autonomous community here in Spain also a disaster area. And as we can see here, El Metro de Madrid volverá a abrir esta noche y ya alcanza las 124 horas de apertura ininterrumpida. So the Metro has been working non-stop for 124 hours because it's been basically the only form of transport in the city for a couple of days there. The uh, commuter trains were stopped, there weren't any buses running, of course. A few lines, a few bus lines have opened up again today. So that seems to be getting back to normal. But uh, things moving quite slowly in the Madrid community and the capital city, Madrid. Outside today, we had a few tractors clearing ice off the roads and trying to move the snow away from cars so people can get back to some type of normality uh, driving. But uh, the road's very dangerous at the moment still. And as I mentioned in yesterday's video, a lot of people have been falling over on the ice. And of course, that has led to hospital wards, emergency wards, uh, becoming saturated with people with minor injuries. So not good there. The government also said that they want people to stay at home, but uh, not many people listening to that advice, unfortunately, which is fairly common nowadays that people don't listen to what authorities tell them, or at least uh, a lot of people don't seem to. Now let's go back and see what's happening here. And there's another article here that shows us the magnitude of all of these people that have fallen over in recent times. Dos mil fracturas en Madrid por la nieve. So 2,000 people have had fractures to bones in Madrid because of the snow. And it says here, Urgencias parecía la fiesta de la escayola. Escayola is, of course, uh, what you have on your arm or your leg when you break it. A cast escayola. So we can see a picture of a bloke here with his arm in a cast. Now we'll go back and see what else is happening here in the news in El Mundo. Let's have a look. Luffy pensiones. So they're talking about electricity prices which have been increasing in recent days. We'll talk about that a little bit more in just a moment. We can also see here that the uh, coronavirus Galicia. Let's have a look here what's happening in Galicia. Galicia limita a cuatro personas las reuniones y pide las casas solo con vivientes y adelanta a las 22 horas el toque de queda. So they're bringing that curfew forward 
and they're limiting gatherings to four people in Galicia. Now, as I said the other day, there's more restrictions popping up all over the country. We can see here in Galicia what they are planning to do. Madrid also announced the other day that they're going to become stricter as well. Valencia, Catalonia, La Rioja as well. So basically the autonomous governments are getting stricter and stricter with the confinements and restrictions and things that you can do and things that you can't do. There's no talk yet of a national lockdown. Apparently the central government wants to avoid that at all costs and it's going to be the autonomous communities that are going to handle the confinements and restrictions and all of these things in order to get the health situation under control, which uh, at the moment is out of control, basically. But we'll also have a look at that in a moment when we go to El Confidencial and we have a look at a graph of uh, the current situation. So uh, what else do we have here? Castilleon. Castilleon Alerta. You just accept the cookies. Castilla León alerta que la transmisión comunitaria no controlada excede las capacidades del sistema sanitario. So what they're saying there is that the health system is about to collapse in Castilla y León. And uh, now they're talking about closing the insides of bars and restaurants, shopping centers, gyms, bedding shops uh, until the 26th. So things not looking good in Castilla y León. Now, let's have a look at El País now. We'll go there. We've got the English version. We'll have a look at the Spanish version first. We'll see what's happening there. So news about Galicia there as well, saying that that curfew is coming down to 10 p.m., starting at 10 p.m. It was probably about 12 uh, midnight before or maybe a little bit later, but reducing it to 10 p.m. to get people inside their homes earlier. And we can see here that the main story that uh, El País is leading with here in Spanish is also about the storm. Filomena Cronología de un Desastre a Cámara Lenta en Madrid. So what they're saying basically is that it was a disaster in slow motion. What happened in Madrid, everybody saw it coming, but uh, of course the result is clear to be seen. We'll just have a look quickly at some photos that I saw before of the storm and the effects of the storm. Let's just go through here and have a look. La Borrasca Filomena, Borrasca Storm. We can see here Puerto de Alcalá, which is one of the main monuments in Madrid. Lots of people skiing there. All of the trees that have fallen down in recent times in some of those very narrow streets in the center. If you go into neighborhoods like Chueca, uh, Malasaña, uh, places like that, you get these narrow streets. And of course, the trees have collapsed this area. There's a street called Calle Fuencarral, which was um, basically shut off the other day because of all of the trees that had fallen down and there was a risk that people could be uh, injured by those trees. Here a group of people walking in the snow there, don't know where that is, somewhere in Madrid. We can see here the cathedral, also there looking very pretty, lots of people out and about enjoying the snow. The airport, yes, an Iberia plane there stuck. Not going anywhere soon. A castle here, don't know where that is. Let me see where that is. La Puerta de Bisagre de Toledo. So in Toledo there, also under heavy snow. And here we have the army who, of course, were called out to help clear the snow and uh, ice off the roads and to try to get things up and running again. And um, today I was also reading in the newspaper that the UME, which is the Unidad Militar de Emergencia, is the army unit that Spaniards appreciate the most. Let's go down here. We can see the Gran Via. Lots of people out and about there, of course, enjoying the snow. Here we have cars, metro stations. Here we have cars here that are stuck, can't move. And, of course, kids out and about enjoying the snow. So that was one of the main problems as well, that there were lots and lots of cars abandoned all over the roads here in the Madrid community, especially on some of the main roads. People couldn't go anywhere, hopped out of their cars, decided to walk home and uh, left the cars basically on the side of the motorways. That also happened to buses. Some buses also were stranded. And of course, uh, one bus apparently was vandalized, or I think a few buses were vandalized so uh, people taking advantage of the situation and vandalizing public transport. So some more ugly human behavior taking place there, people vandalizing buses that were trapped in the snow. I also read in the paper this morning that there was a food truck 
that was also looted and uh, they stole all of the food inside the truck. So uh, criminals always looking to take advantage of the situation and they've had a few days to take advantage of the snowstorm. Now we'll go back to El Pais and see what's happening here. Politics, politics, politics. Don't really want to talk too much about that. We'll go to the English version and see what the headlines are there. We can see here the third coronavirus wave gains pace in Spain with 25,500 new infections and 408 COVID-related fatalities. That's why I mentioned before the health situation not improving in Spain. And uh, here we go. Spain extends coronavirus restrictions on travel from the UK. Let's have a look. Spain extends restrictions, but bah, bah, ban on non-resident arrivals is pushed to February 2, and the grace period for providing residency has expired, but passengers whose flights were delayed by the snowstorm will not need a new PCR. So there we go, that ban for tourists, I imagine, because if you're a resident, you're able to come back okay, there's no problem there, or if you are a citizen here in Spain, you're able to come back from the UK, but no tourism from the UK until February the 2nd. So that extension going out there. And of course, the need for uh, PCRs if you've been trapped in airports. We had one comment yesterday from somebody who was trapped in Amsterdam. And of course, he said that they are accepting the expired PCR tests which is uh, good news there because obviously you don't want to have to fork out the money to get a new one done. Now let's go on to another newspaper. We'll go on to El Confidencial, El Diario de los Lectores Influyentes. Okay, let's have a look. Now we used to look at this map a few months ago, the El Confidencial COVID-19 map. And we can see here that we have down below the 200 cases, the 2 to 400 cases, 400 cases plus. And we can see that the majority of the country now is at that 400 plus stage. For example, if we tap here on Madrid, or oh, sorry, Castilla-La Mancha, we can see nearly at 600. Uh, Extremadura, 1,076 cases per 100,000 in the last 14 days. Uh, the Valencian community also quite high as well. Let's see if maybe we can get Madrid. Madrid, 621. But if we go to places like Asturias, Asturias is quite low, 203. And then, of course, the Canary Islands, 150. So that's crept up in the last couple of days as well. But I think the main problem in the Canary Islands is on the island of Tenerife. And uh, some of the other islands are not as affected as Tenerife. So that's probably the reason why numbers in the Canaries are so high at the moment there. And, of course, the Balearic Islands, 600 cases uh, per 100,000 in the last 14 days. So not looking good there. But if we look at this graph here on the right, we can see the uh, amount of cases again, they're creeping up. But of course, deaths nowhere near uh, at the same levels that they were back in April, May, when the uh, virus was out of control here in Spain. So we've got quite a lot of cases at the moment, but uh, nowhere near the same amount of deaths per day that we had earlier in the year. Now let's have a look here, the main news here again. Madrid cifra en cientos de millones la factura y mañana concretará la zona catastrófica. So uh, hundreds of millions of euros, the bill that the Madrid government is saying this storm is going to cost and uh, tomorrow they're going to decide if it is a disaster zone or not. Now let's have a look finally here at the news. We'll go to the national broadcaster, see what's happening there, RTVE. So again, live, what's happening? Galicia, Navarra, La Rioja, endurecen las restricciones ante el avance de la tercera ola. So Galicia, Navarra, La Rioja, tightening restrictions because of this third wave. So what are they going to be doing here? Yeah, okay, curfews, mobility restrictions, the amount of people that can get together, shopping centers, all of the typical things. And uh, basically, that's going to be the situation here in Spain for I don't know how long. What else is happening here with the national broadcaster? Podemos exige. Let's have a look at this one here. This is about the electricity prices at the moment. Unidas Podemos exige el PSOE una reforma del mercado eléctrico para reducir el precio de la luz. So, Podemos, the minority party in the government, is demanding that the majority party in the government, the PSOE, PSOE, uh, look into the 
electricity market or reform the electricity market in order to bring down the price of electricity, which as I mentioned before is very, very high at the moment. Now apparently this is due to various reasons, obviously the uh, demand, the supply and demand, the typical factor there. Also apparently because they're not able to get as much energy from renewable energy sources, there's no wind for example, so that is one of the reasons why electricity prices have been going up. But uh, a lot of people struggling to pay electricity bills at the moment, gas bills, the price of gas has also gone up in recent days as well. And uh, it's leading to, I think they call it um, energy poverty. And it's become a big problem here in recent years. And uh, the government here, or Podemos, demanding that the government do something about it in order to lower people's electricity bills. Now, this is happening all over Europe. It's happening all over the world, I think. I was listening to Australian radio today, and something there similar is also happening. So that's not good news. But uh, as I said, a lot of people having trouble paying their electricity bills. And you read stories in the paper all the time of people that just can't afford to turn their gas heating on. And that also leads me to another problem. I've seen a few comments in recent times about people saying just how cold some of the houses are down there in Andalusia, in Valencia, because they don't have central heating, marble floors, which also makes it very, very cold indoors as well. And that is a big problem in some of those coastal areas that they don't have the proper heating needed for cold winters. I suppose you can take the risk that maybe you don't get cold winters all the time or maybe the winters are not cold for very long and uh, the temperatures start to heat up quite quickly in those parts of the world. But a lot of the houses in the south of Spain and on the coastal areas not prepared for cold weather. It's the opposite here in the centre of the country. Uh, here you find central heating in the majority of homes. All new homes come with central heating, so there's no problem there. The problem that we have here is in the summer months when it gets quite hot. We, for example, don't have air conditioning here because it never gets really hot inside, but that's also another problem that you're going to have to keep in mind. The uh, energy costs trying to keep houses warm and trying to keep them cool in the hot summer months because of those extremes that we're having nowadays. I think it was minus 10 last night, so that was quite cold. And in four or five months time, it's probably gonna be 30 or 35 degrees. So we're getting those extremes here in Spain at the moment regarding the weather. And here we can see an article which is uh, related to what I just mentioned there, the, uh, the cold snap that we have, the historic cold snap. La ola de frío histórica, la pandemia agrava la pobreza energética. So that's that uh, energy poverty that I was talking about before. Heating, they say, I can't afford this luxury. And there's a picture of a couple of uh, elderly people there that obviously have trouble turning their heating on because of the cost. And uh, I think I was reading this article before and they said that they try to keep warm basically with hot water. So uh, unfortunate that people find themselves in this situation in a country like Spain. But uh, as I said, it's becoming more and more common to read stories like this one here. Now we'll go into the comment section now of the videos and we'll have a look and see uh, what people are asking, some of the questions that people are putting forward here. Uh, we'll have a look at this one here from Paul. I really enjoy your video, Stuart. I wonder if Spain will open up to tourists this year, perhaps vaccinated ones. Yeah, good question, Paul. I don't know whether the country is going to open to tourism this year. It's all going to depend on the situation of other countries. As we just saw, tourists from the UK are not allowed to come into the country until the 2nd of February. And I don't know if that's going to be extended or not. It's going to depend on the health situation in the UK. The UK, as we know, is a very important source of tourists for Spain. I'm not sure of the percentage, but I do know that the UK does provide a lot of tourists to Spain. And of course, with Brexit and everything now going on, not being a member of the European Union, things are complicated there. So not really sure what's going to happen this year regarding tourism. It's going to depend on the health situation. If the vaccination plan takes off and people get vaccinated and people become immune to the virus, that could allow them to travel back into the country. But at the moment, why would you want to come to Spain? Everywhere is uh, shutting down, restrictions, curfews. A lot of places are not open, bars, restaurants, shopping centers. So what are you going to do when you're here? That's the question. So uh, I don't know whether mainland Spain is an attractive destination at the moment. The Canary Islands could be a different story. As we saw, the incidence rate down there, not as high as it is in the center of Spain. So that could be an option for people. And I'm sure that people are still considering traveling to that part of Spain. But for the rest of the European Union, uh, people are allowed to travel to Spain. The Schengen groups are allowed to travel here, all of those people in the Schengen area. 
But uh, as I said, with the current health situation, could be a bit of a risk. So uh, that's it. We'll have a look at some more comments tomorrow. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this new format of the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't, and uh, we might do it again in the future. Or maybe I'll go back to the couch, which is a little bit more comfortable. I don't know. But it's a good way to have a look at some of the news, have a look at some of the uh, words in Spanish, of course, seeing the news in Spanish and some of the main news outlets here. Debate the situation out as you normally do. I'll see you in the next video. Hasta luego.